Hey everyone, just happy to announce that Haven Cottage Event Center is opening in late spring of this year in McKinney. Haven Cottage is an event center for small to medium-sized occasions in a country setting minutes away from the city. Use the facility for a conference, art exhibition, and multi-purpose meetings, or just celebrate your family's joyous events exactly how you want to. Everything you need to know to get in touch with them is all in the description, okay? Email, phone, all right? Check them out, see what's up, maybe reserve something, who knows, whatever it is, check it out. All right, enjoy the episode. Podcast, podcast, one more podcast, 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 one more podcast, podcast. About right. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to the One More Podcast podcast. There it is. I said it correctly. Do you know how many times? How many times we had to like three times for the tw- uh, the commuter? I had to start over three times. God, it was it was not fun. Anyways, um, this is a advice uh, one. We haven't done that in a while, and um, we have some special people. Uh, very near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, we can go off to the brand new guest uh, here on our show. If you'd like to introduce yourself, hi, I'm All Diane. Right. All right, and there is Diane, and uh, an even more super special, close, dear what? friend to my heart uh, is BV Harper Parker. And then we have Blake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I love Blake. I I, I tease and I poke, but uh, it's all in good fun. Just because I secretly hate him. Anyways, um. We are here to do podcasts about advice, and um, no one has submitted any kind of questions, which kind of makes me sad, because I would do more of these if people had questions and concerns. So, um, if you have any dying questions, or you're stuck in a predicament, and you don't know what to do, and you want the advice of uh, some young millennials, um, definitely (laughs) send an email, do a comment, uh, anything and all to get in contact with me. Uh, I've got a Facebook page, send a message through there. Uh, totally we'll keep everything anonymous definitely won't say any names we'll actually do substitute names and uh, we'll answer your questions so hopefully we can help you otherwise we're just going to help random people on the internet 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 uh all right so okay not invited but my date is there's a school dance coming up and some kids rented a party bus to drive well pretty much everyone going but not me the girl who i'm taking is invited too I really don't understand why they would just exclude me like this. I have talked to some of these kids before, and they seem to be on good terms. The girl I am taking hasn't mentioned anything to me either. I really just want to understand why this is happening, and I don't want to be awkward about it. This is prom. Is he a junior or a senior? Uh, I'm guessing. We'll guess a senior. senior. Yeah. Hmm. Why is this happening, Blake? Have you ever been excluded? Let's let's take it take it back a step. Have you been ever been excluded to anything? Uh, yeah, every person has, but it's about well, how like you... within within your group of your social group, not necessarily a close knit friend group, but like of the people that like you in associate high school, with. like yeah. baseball, sure, teams. or like no, it was always oh, so you're always included. Well, usually because I had the biggest car, and oh, so okay. I had the big suburban, I could sure. fit like ten people in it, and okay. so it was always if even if they didn't like me, Blake had to had, had to drive because the they usually would drink and do all that stuff, mm-hmm. and so. I was always the one like, hey, just give me five bucks and I'll drive you guys around and That's you know, good. hang out or whatever. What about you, Diane? Did you ever have uh, the exclusion within the friend group and then you find out about it? Because that's happened to me before and um, I have a few things to say of how to deal with it. But if you would like to put in your two cents before I start yelling and screaming. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm definitely sure that I have. Um, I can't think of a specific okay. time off the top of my head. But I mean, of course, it's I know it's happened. All right. Um, Conflict resolution at all? Any advice on that? Well, I would say if, um, like, does did the girl tell him that she's going to go or not go, like, without him? That's what I'm kind of curious Yeah, that's about. one thing. If she's, like, if she's the date, she should go with her date. Mm-hmm. Like, that seems like the right way to go. And if not, then that dude should have a good time anyway. Yeah. Like, with or without her? Yeah. Yeah. I would say if she's going to go without him, he should just not go with her yeah i kind of have some insight on this because my yeah, junior year prom i got no my sophomore year homecoming i took this junior girl and mm-hmm. uh, we were great friends that whole semester and then junior at, at the homecoming she uh she abandoned me and left mm-hmm. like wow. 15 minutes into the dance um and it's she she said that it's because she like started getting sad because her boyfriend dumped her to go to college or whatever. And so she was just feeling lonely or whatever, Mm -hmm. but I, you gotta have, you gotta find a way to have a good time, make, make a good time out of a bad time. 
Okay. And so that's that's what I did, you know. You, and so I got literally like we were dancing, and then she looked at me, and then said, "I'm sorry," and she left. Like that's exactly how it happened. Wow, that's and I was standing in the middle of a bunch of sweaty teenagers, just you know, <laughs> just, what do I do now? And I figured out figured out a way to have some fun, but. You know, if if that's the dude, if that's the guy, then go out and have fun. Like, don't let, don't let that dictate. Don't let other people dictate you having fun. That's yeah. that's good. That's good. Um, I would definitely be uh, what I, what I was gonna mention about the conflict resolution. Uh, definitely be because he didn't say um if she specifically said she was going on the bus or not. Um, but I would just be direct about it. There's no way you can not like beat around the bush. Be like, hey, look, I wasn't invited. Were you invited? Oh, you are okay. Well, are you going? And then bada boom, bada bing, because. Um, definitely beating around the bush is not good and that how uh, that is how rumors and false information can get spread and uh, you don't want that because it is your prom or dance or whatever um, and that would not be fun so yeah. I also have to wonder like why didn't this guy get invited <laughs> I don't know is does he, he like smell a, weird he, yeah, like I, he could be a weirdo <laughs> oh that's true he oh is he like an he oh is he a, a dick oh. yeah yeah, go ahead. Is he you like can, an asshole or yeah. something? Yeah, say any cuss word you want. Okay, no, yeah. I just didn't want to do There's it no and then filter, like, yeah. get like a dirty look. Just say all your cuss word, get them out right now. All right, so we're going to cut that part. <laughs> 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 Anyways, Sorry, I'm a bad um, influence. Yeah, so no, I agree. He could be the, the butthole and uh, not be. about that. Good job. I didn't even friends. think about that. Yeah. He could be the bad guy. Yeah. I never thought about like people asking these questions online. They could, but they're yeah. actually the dicks yeah, yeah. in this situation. But see, but also kind of from how he like talked though, he he said like we seem to be on good terms. Mm-hmm. That doesn't seem like a like a dick a guy thing to say. Thing oh, that's to say. true. It sounds like a smart kid thing to say. So maybe he's just like a nerd. Okay, maybe and then just... I feel bad for him because he should get invited because he's probably super cool. Well, now I'm conflicted. He's either a, a nice nerd or a horrible mm-hmm. butthole. Well, if you're yeah. a nerd, like my junior year, um, I didn't go to homecoming because me and some other friends, like I in high school, I didn't just hang out with the baseball kids specifically. Like mm-hmm. there was other cliques that I tried to get involved with and in, from classes or whatever. And I remember just playing board games my junior year at homecoming, yeah. just with a bunch of my other my other you know nerdy friends. Mm-hmm. Homecoming night, it was a blast. Like I'd prefer that much more than spending two hundred and eighty bucks to go to True. a mm-hmm. dance with a bunch of sweaty teenagers. So, well, that's good. That's what that should, dude should do. Like, unless this girl is the one, I'd skip out, dude. All right, um, we are going to move on to a little bit, a little deeper, not as intensive. Like, what were some intense questions we had? Like. <laughs> Uh, our mother or my mother. No, my sister just died in a car act or of cancer. Yeah, and I'm taking in her son. Yep, her two sons and her yep. one of them is autistic. Anyways, and we not had that. to give advice. We're not there yet. That. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> how does one learn to cope with the inability to alleviate the suffering of others? I don't. No other context to that. I would say a big part of it is that you just have to. St- shut yourself off from it a little bit okay not be as open to news and other things that Mm -hmm. could potentially cause you distress because if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff and it causes you like an overt amount of like anxiety Mm -hmm. then it's in your best interest to shut yourself off from it even if it does make you a little bit more ignorant in that kind of way but Mm -hmm. who cares you need to do what you need to do to be happy well i I feel like you could probably do it in a not as uh, rude way just be like look man I can't take your stuff so I'm gonna not talk to you for a while like you could probably wait what so like can you if... read it to me again yeah sure no I mean you were answering the question um here sorry I lost my spot um I think it, it, it was like how do I uh, from the suffering how of do others I cope? yeah yeah how I do I cope thinking, like grand scheme i guess oh like, i was like, like taking major, it as a, like, like on the news like, or something like worldwide suffering, oh like people no i thought this was like a friend death. a friend oh. in his life oh, let's okay. take both let's okay do both. sure all okay. right so so we'll keep we'll call okay. the grand scheme of things i do Sorry. agree yeah. no you're, you're good i that is a vague question no context so i guess we're going to do multiple answers um so in a global i do agree you definitely need to shut yourself off um i think you could probably uh Find small outlets to uh, find the information that you're looking for or um, maybe receive it through a friend. Get it filtered through them. They can yeah. give you the boiler po- boilerplate uh, um, information. So I, I, I think you pretty much hit the highlights on that one. But uh, what if it's like a friend? It's like it's just 
a friend is in a bad place and there's not a lot you can do about it. So how can you deal with the, how do you, how can you cope with that? Understand that you're not the one that's struggling the most. And I think that's a maturity kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're younger, we like to picture that the world revolves around us. That's every single teenager ever. Um, and I think this maturity goes with both of those contexts, both of those set of situations. So if you're, if you look at the world around you and you see everyone thought the world was crumbling in 2016 and 2017 was awful, blah, blah, blah. If it's a maturity thing, I think whenever you grow up and you realize that, no, the world isn't perfect, but it's not, it's not the world's job to make me happy. It's my job to make myself happy. And I think that goes with the best friend too. If my best friend is struggling, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a step back and realize that my me getting upset about this is not going to help my friend get better, okay. whatever his problems are. Yeah. Same. Same. Same thing. No. Oh, okay. Actually, right. I mean, I definitely see where, where you're coming from, but no, we, I we disagree, yeah. disagree, yeah, okay. do whatever. It's but all like, good. No I, one's going to well, get yeah, offended. I, yeah. I didn't over this. I didn't think he would get offended. No, I would hope not. No, Blake is a very um, sensitive butterfly. Yeah. We have to be uh, very about careful. About the Reddit things yeah. that we read. <laughs> um, uh, but like, uh, what I was going to say is, I don't think it's so much of like making it about yourself or not being mature. Uh, I think it's more of like wanting desperately maybe to be able to help the people that are close to you if it is in the instance of like a friend mm -hmm. and being upset if maybe there's not something that you can do. Like say there's like a like a death in somebody's family that's close to you, like your best friends, you know, somebody dies and sure. like they're really upset and it's like you're watching them in so much pain. It's not that you're necessarily making it about yourself. But just mm -hmm. that it's so hard to see them go through it. Well, then maybe it sucks. right. So maybe maturity wasn't the right word. Maybe self awareness was the better word. Mm -hmm. So okay. being self aware enough to know that if they need help, you're going to be there. If they need help, mm -hmm. and that's that's really sometimes all you can offer is if is somebody to somebody is look, I'm going to be here. You may not need anything from me now. There may not be anything that I can do. But mm -hmm. just knowing that you've got those people that, that you have people that have your back can mean the world to a lot of people so would it be let me spin a spin a little different situation here would it be selfish or uh, unfair for you to kind of and what i was trying to say earlier was just to close yourself off from it tell your friend that hey i'll be there if there's an emergency whatever it is i'm there for you but then kind of take a take a week off or something and so you can just kind of focus on yourself so you won't have to be so engulfed with this person's problems not necessarily you know extreme problems or whatever it is but you know, take time for yourself so that you're not focusing constantly about this. Do you think that's fair to take time off from not necessarily take time off from the friendship, but just kind of, you know, say, okay, I'm not going to, let's not hang out this week or whatever. Let me do my stuff and then reconvene. Depends on the situation. So, but yeah, I don't think that's selfish because okay. you making yourself better to help cope with those issues that your friend or a loved one is having makes you better to help them after that week or after that time off that okay. makes you a better friend and a better ally to have in those times so okay cool awesome so blake i don't want to hear any of your problems <laughs> i'm taking a week off never have i told you any <laughs> you're right we are totally shut off from each other yep um all right how do i get my friends to focus okay i'm starting a debate club and it's kind of a rough start i have to plan for people but they will just talk over me it's so annoying and people are leaving the club and it's getting small what do i do blake is getting some coffee so diane you can tackle this question all okay, by yourself so how do you get people interested in your debate club so uh, and, right? and we, you, that, that's the question and i think we can take a step back and say um just how do you get people interested in something that you want right, to do right so yeah, yeah of course um i would just say you have to do it in a way that uh, is attractive to the most amount of people, but still stays on topic, of course. It's not like debate club and then, I don't know, stuff about horses. Sure. I don't know. But you know what I mean. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I would just say, like, you know, bring snacks, bring drinks and sodas and make it fun and make it, like, something that people want to go do and then uh, okay. kind of, of be kind of like, ooh, chore. there's debate. Right. And then it sneaks in there and then, boom, you got debate club. Okay. And you got, but... Everybody kind of got to get a feel for it first. I don't know. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I kind of just say 
if your friends aren't interested, don't, your friends aren't interested. I, I think I, I do I do appreciate that you can try and and I mean I'll I'll try that with some of my friends. It's like oh this is a really awesome movie you need to see it and then like I'll offer I'll make popcorn or I'll blah blah blah. I get that and that mm-hmm. makes sense. But I think uh, in this situation. If, I'm assuming this is probably for school or something That's like that. What I was kidding, you could probably yeah. just find other people who are interested in debate, and so yeah. then you can stop being friends with your old friends and make new friends, and then totally cut ties and just be a new whole person. Well, I'm talking. Yeah, I was. I was talking <laughs> about like how to keep a club from basically shutting oh, down. Oh, well, sure. But yeah, sure. no, I feel what you're saying. Right. I'm. I'm picking up what you're. What like, you're how to get your friends to focus. Um, if you're a leader and that's, that's, I, I see this guy as a leader. So what a leader should do is, I don't know if appealing to, sometimes that's the best way to do it is appeal to the broader audience, but sometimes you have to pinpoint each person's individual motivations mm-hmm. and why are they in debate club? Why, why do they, if they kind of want to do it, why do they kind of want to do it? And then kind of just pinpoint those with each person. Just, I don't know. I've never been the the leader of an academic squad, so I don't. That seems kind of out of my out of my league. But and if you take it to sports or whatever, you know, you can pinpoint each person's different motivations and set expectations. And if those aren't met, then you know maybe it is time to find somebody else new. But I wouldn't just completely x those people out without giving them an opportunity to redeem sure okay no that's 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 fair um real quick though um short question very short and blake this is a question for you specifically okay um why does my penis burn (laughs) i've never had sex and my penis is burning why um question why is this one specifically for me because <laughs> well, yeah you don't think i know about penises i mean I'm okay sure fine you do, but... drink a lot of water um don't go online because <laughs> if you because that you're not going to get answers from there then you'll find out your penis is going to fall off right it's true and then you'll it's have true. penis cancer <laughs> um drink a lot of water um see if that helps after a couple of days um because sometimes you just need to drink a lot of water and flush out the bacteria that's in your penis or whatever sure. i guess i'm okay. not a doctor boom done that's it next but, question or go can to I, a can i chime in on this i mean I if you want like to actually might, go ahead go you ahead. should it depends on how long this has been going on but you should probably go to the doctor or <laughs> mm-hmm. something because if you're like does it burn when you pee like, i don't know like obviously that's you're not gonna saying. answer so, me but right. like try that for a couple of days and then if that the doesn't doctor. help go to the you need to go well because you can your, have like a uti or something you need to go then... see your family doctor don't go to a care now see your family doctor well, yeah yeah like just a gp well you know what some people can't afford a family doctor okay? fair enough then go to care now and get fake drugs well <laughs> oh wait oh i just thought you meant because it's not like an emergency oh no i'm just either I mean, way some people but or anyways go to the emergency room Tell next question you cancer that's not a good idea that's a waste of resources anyways. <laughs> god blake gosh jeez. all right anyways next. advice please <laughs> yeah that's fine uh hello i'm a young college student and i'm super broke and hungry until i get paid on wednesday any advice of what can i do um i am pretty disconnected with my family at this point what can i do for food until then um, anyone who's been in this situation uh, and has advice would be super helpful. I'm not sure if I'm able to go to a soup kitchen since I'm not homeless. Any advice helps a bunch. Thank you. I, so, oh, no. sorry, go ahead, Diane. No, you're good. Go. So this guy has zero zeros in his bank account. I'm assuming that's the situation. Straight up zeros. Sure. You've got no friends that'll bump you some, that'll bum you some ramen or anything like that. Uh, not stated, but that is a good. That is a uh, good advice. And he doesn't ask for friends. No family there to. Well, he says his family's disconnected, so he might be like out of state or something. Um. Okay. Either one, drink a lot of water until Wednesday, <laughs> and <laughs> just you know, and then pig out on Wednesday. But and then on Wednesday, take care of your necessities like your bills and books or whatever, mm-hmm. and then do not spend any more money. Like you never want to be in that situation ever again, because mm-hmm. I've I've never been in the situation where I've ever been at the risk of going hungry, mm-hmm. and it's partially because I don't spend money. True, <laughs> like that's I, true. That's like you need to set the foundations for being financially stable now, not tomorrow. Now, mm-hmm. so, but I guess currently in the like right now in this current situation, man. I don't know if you got friends, go and get some food, dude. Okay. Like it's 
or go to go buy and McDonald's or whatever and ask somebody to give to give you a dollar so you can get a McChicken or something like that's. Well, I mean, so you think you should resort to begging for money, or just in it's this not situation? begging? Let's, let's. It's not begging. He's not on the street with a cardboard sign on the side of a highway or anything true, like that. True. Ask for a couple. Fine. Ask for a quarter to go to a phone booth if anyone uses a phone booth anymore. I like go even, turn in some. Booths? Go turn in some sure, coke cans or something. Get yourself a nickel. Oh, for that's those. smart. Yeah. Like do do, do something that. to get yourself some money. Okay. There are plenty of ways to get money. Anything else, Diane? I would just say, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna go under the assumption that they have like at least like ten bucks. I, it sounds like he's got nothing. <laughs> Zero. He's got nothing for nobody. Find some change on the ground or do the cans or whatever. Ooh, go That's into a, good idea. a fountain mm. in the mall and yeah. just and take all kids. the yes. <laughs> yeah. Take all funny. the wishes. It's a real problem. It's so screwed up. It's oh, even I'm an sure. issue. Sir. But buy a shit ton of rice and beans right there. Complimentary yep. proteins. Hella cheap in bulk. Easy to make. True. Lasts forever. Doesn't expire. Easy. Boom. Rice and beans. Done. All right. Meals for days. <laughs> and uh, weeks and months. Yes. And days and hours. And it, it gives you protein. You're yes, right. It does. All right. Uh, should I attend a party with a younger crowd? I'm 27, and I've always had some pretty severe mm-hmm. social anxiety. I gained a lot of confidence in the last year, though, uh, especially since I've changed careers and interact with all types of people every day now. Recently, I was invited to go to a birthday party by a coworker. Oh. This person is 22 years old, so their friends are around the same age. I would like to go, but I'm feeling very anxious about the age differences. Would it be weird to go? I feel like I'm too old and out of the loop and that everyone would be very awkward. If I'm overreacting, uh, does anyone have any tips on staying cool in uh, in this situation? I appreciate it. I have thoughts. Go ahead. Okay. Do it. I would say that um, at first, well, at first I definitely thought that this was going in a different direction. I thought this was going in a creepy, totally like high school, too, yeah. like oh, going okay. to a high school party kind of thing. And I was pulling a super bad. Yeah. Right, well, before we answer the question, no, don't go to high school parties when you're 27. <laughs> no, no, absolutely don't. Okay. No. All right. Now 22 year olds <laughs> out. So it's a, a, probably a five to six year difference between the average age group. Okay. Not too old at all. Really? I dated a guy who was 13 years older than me, mm-hmm. and I hung out with a bunch of people who were old enough to be my grandparents, mm-hmm. and uh, like I got along just fine. I think five or six years, you'll you'll be okay, whether you're in the loop or not. If you're mm-hmm. a nice person and you're friendly, well, people but, will respond. But this is this is a one instance where he may or may not see these people again, and he's only going for one person. So? Okay. Just I'd be friendly. I'm saying, I'm saying just be friendly to people, and people mm-hmm. will respond positively back, in okay. my experience. All right. I don't know. I... I I'm huge on the age difference thing, so I I don't know. I feel like it'd be just pass. I mean, it's a birthday party. Just pass on it. In, invite mm-hmm. the 22 year old to it's, one of your older per, uh, older person parties. No, if it's a birthday party, go there for the friend. Yeah, if, like it's your friend's birthday party. Invite. Well, you can to have go. like a you can you can take that friend to like a birthday dinner or something like that. So, and I would still well, be in the. If you really like this person, you're just gonna be like, "Sorry, no." Sorry, no. There's uh, sorry, I'm sorry. You, you guys are five years younger than me. Can't all right, all right. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense. It's not nice. Yeah. Oh, well, it's not nice either. I, I, it's not that it's not nice. It's just like I would go and be the fun drunk twenty-seven. There you go. That, I guess. Yeah. That's, all right. Yeah. You're like the equivalent of the crazy drunk uncle. That would be okay at the Christmas yeah. party. I don't know how effective that would be, but okay. Except less racism. I'll, yeah, hopefully. Not necessarily. <laughs> Fine, my family. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. Okay. Ex girlfriend won't give shirt back. I left some clothes at her house before. I don't really care about most of them except this specific shirt I got at a concert a couple years ago. I saw her wearing it at school and asked to give it back on Monday, and she said yes. It's been a week, and I asked her when she could give it back, and she said, "I don't know. I'll let you know." She never speaks to me. She kissed my brother. The least she can do is give me back my shirt. Jeez. <laughs> well, then. All right, well, we know why she's an ex-girlfriend. You can ask your brother to get it the next time he's over at her place. True. <laughs> That's true. That's true. If you're even still talking to your brother. Uh. That is also true. So let's say they're not. He, he's not going to ask his brother to get the shirt. How is he going to get the shirt back? Dude, Break let it into go. Her house. Let but it it's go. A, I, I can understand a, a, sent, a sentimental like going to a concert if it was a really good concert. If somebody's and it's a band that you love, right? If so, if somebody, if Britney kept and Britney and I broke up and she kept my Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers tour yeah. shirt, yeah, my favorite band, one of the best concerts I've ever been to, exactly. Then 
Yeah, I'm gonna feel sentimental about it, but I'm also you're, gonna you're go gonna let it go. I'm gonna buy another shirt, dude. There you go. Is uh, it signed? If it's not, it's signed, not signed. Who cares? No, it's and they not, still no, sell the 40th anniversary tour shirts. Uh, like, it, I would get get the parents involved. I'd be like, hey, look, your your daughter. Is, <laughs> Excuse me, miss. <laughs> but, ma'am, sir, my, I'm serious. Like, sir, I, your daughter uh, stole my Rush 2013 <laughs> T-shirt, and it's really nice, three quarter sleeve. I'm gonna need that back. I, I that dad not, will that give is... you the finger and tell you to get off his. Property. No, the dad will be like, I. I oh yeah, give that me one son. second. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 val- I value Rush. Hey, you like Rush too? <laughs> I like Rush too. I, I. And then I, you're drinking with her dad, and yeah, she walks go. down the stairs. And, and then you kiss the dad. <laughs> ha! Take that, girlfriend. <laughs> Whoa! Full circle. Uh, well, you have to have a little bit of revenge. All right. Well, like I don't think you should let it go. Dad. <laughs> What's your idea of revenge seeking, man? <laughs> I I think you should not let it go. Definitely talk to the parents and um find a way. I don't know, or maybe like get in contact with one of her friends and just be like, look, you know, blah 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 blah, or lie about it and then tell her to get the shirt back. The shirt was like a, a gift from his deceased uncle, and it has all the sentimental value. Getty the, Lee the gave me this shirt. Exactly. He handed it to me. <laughs> This was, and then uh, Neil Pert wiped his eyebrow sweat with it. And I'm gonna need I cannot, that back. Yeah, I haven't washed it. It's never been washed. It's, <laughs> it's three years old. Hasn't been washed. Gross. Um. <laughs> next question. Um. Okay. Today, my mom got laid off. What should mm. I expect? To clarify, she's been with the same company for eight years, and today they announced that they were laying off people out of the blue. None of us were prepared for it. We were all worried because she was uh, the primary earner in the family, as well as currently putting me and my two sisters through college. I have no idea what to do or how this will affect my whole family. So I think not what to do, but what to expect. Different changes. How can the how does the family dynamic change? You just have to be supporting. Okay. I, guess, if, I don't know how old this kid is, but let's well, they're just, in college, so you're in college. Okay. we'll do traditional college student. Okay, um, just be supportive. Mm. That's. You know, you're again, you're not the one going through getting laid off. Your mom is. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything you can do, if you need to cut back spending, if your mom's giving you money during college, you need to cut back. Growing up, were you uh, were you aware of the uh, family finances at all? Weren't aware of the family finances, but I was aware of job changes. Like my mom would change jobs. It seemed like every one or two years mm-hmm. just because she wanted more money and she would go somewhere but else. like but like for the most for the most part you knew no, both dad, parents were employed you right. were not having to worry about money or anything like that uh not until i was in high school okay and i started making my own money and oh sure. getting obsessed okay. with doing that sure um and so i guess at that point i my parents thought i was mature enough to talk about finances mm-hmm. and discuss that stuff sure Simply because I was paying for my own stuff by then, mm-hmm. for you know different, you know car insurance, phone bill, all right, that right, stuff. right, right. So at that point, it became clear, and that's part of the reason that part of the life choices that I made about you know going to specific colleges, not playing baseball in college, all those stuff mm-hmm. revolved around the family finance dynamic. Okay, and so again, you just have to be supportive. Mm-hmm. You're you keep. Keep going with your studies. And do you think she should? She and her sister should get jobs, or do you think the mom has saved enough money at this point to? Well, I don't know about. I I personally, because I worked forty to fifty hours mm-hmm. during college, um, I would get yeah. a job because it's yeah. doable. It's okay. doable. It's hard, but it's doable. Mm-hmm. So I would do that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Diane? Did you ever have to worry about family finances? Okay, yeah. no, all right, not particularly, but I would just say I know that that you were saying more of a, like what to expect and how to deal with it kind of thing. But I would just, as a general rule of thumb, get a job and go to community college. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> That's no, what I, I would mean, say. Because I mean, it's, then, it's cheap. you know, a couple hundred bucks for a semester opposed to a couple thousand. Is that what you That did? helps a lot. Community college? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but I didn't finish. Oh, so. But, yeah. Bam. Same here. Nice. There That's what know. my dad did. Mm-hmm. And he's a very successful person. Yep. Yeah. So anybody who bags on it, I just kind of laugh in their face and <laughs> imagine their future student debt as I don't have it. And there you go. Um, okay. Wife is drinking an uncomfortable amount while alone with our infant. Oh. Mm, mm, in a bit, mm. I'm a bit of an... Im- Sorry, let me start over. I'm at a bit of an impasse on the best way to try and handle this. 
My wife has an issue with alcohol. Her father is an alcoholic, and I fearfully watch her following his footsteps. I don't have an issue with alcohol. I drank to, sh- to my share. I drank my share. However, I have moved on in life, and I haven't drank in beer in. Uh, I prob. Oh, I'm sorry. I probably have drank in ten beers in 2017. Um, I've expressed my issues with her drinking repeatedly to a point that the sound of the bottle opening changes my entire mood for the evening. I no longer have an uh, unbiased view of the on the evening. Um, I got home at 8.30 to a sloppy drunk wife, um, 6 to 7, uh, 9.5% beers. She almost mm-hmm. dropped our one-year-old uh, along with the normal shenanigans. I don't want her to abuse the alcohol to ruin our marriage. However, my mental sanity is getting frayed. Uh, that those who experience this, uh, what works? I guess coming from a family where both sides have alcoholics in them. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's touchy, especially because it's your kid and it's one years old. When do you stop breastfeeding? Oh, uh, I don't if know what's a good question. Did. If she, ever, okay. I mean, I would say, oh, I mean, some people go just go straight for to the bottle. Time, other people. I, I just know there was like a, a year, year and a half. There's I'm gonna a hope and like pray that months. she's not breastfeeding while she's drinking with I that assume, child. I wouldn't assume so. Well, but real quick, there's there's a funny TV show, and I forget what it was. I think I'm pretty sure it was Desperate Housewives, but I don't think it was. Um, but uh, there's like this one woman at work. Yeah, I think it was Desperate Housewives. So there's this one woman at work who's like this super power hungry woman, like the traditional uh, kind of eighty shoulder pad woman, you know, independent lady, sure. and um. Uh, she was just such this horrible person to the the main character of the show. And then there was one time where she brought her kid to work, and her kid, I would say, is maybe four or five. Definitely walking toddler, can talk, whatever it is. And uh, so whenever the kid needed to drink, instead of drinking from a bottle, she was still breastfeeding him. Oh, no. And so it was really funny because... Uh, she would go to the office and, you know, close all the windows and stuff like that. But then, like, someone would peek through the blinds and saw <laughs> it. And it was just it was really <laughs> hilarious. Because, because the kid, because after the person saw it, the kid, no one else knew about it. But the kid was like, uh, whenever she's doing something, the kid would just be like, I want milk. I want my milk. And then the the other person was the only person who knew what that meant. So... <laughs> It was just funny. Just kind Anyways, of look around awkwardly. So I guess you can feed kids until you're about like four or five. Well, there. I mean, what's who's that one lady from The Big Bang Theory? The uh, well, uh, Sheldon's girlfriend. Yeah. In the what show, about her? she has like is still breastfeeding her kids. Like that's like in there's real life? an article about yeah in real life. That was how an old article. is the kid? I don't know. I'll look it up though. It's, Please do. It, it's it's for real. Like until they're like old. Wow. Can you think of Game of Thrones with uh, Robin? No, not uh, Game of Thrones. Does Game of Thrones have someone? Oh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. It has, uh, what, what's her name? What's uh, her name? Uh, Cat Sister. Cat Sister, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen Game of Thrones. No. I know The girl that name. Baelish killed? Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler okay, so, alert. So they're. <laughs> you uh, don't even know. I, sure, I, a word. But she's breastfeeding her like eight or nine year old kid. Oh, that's really good. In front of a bunch of people. Oh, okay. Well, that's probably a power move then. And then throws people through a moon door. Of course. Then it's definitely and a power she move. She dies. Anyways, we totally derailed from this. What was the original <laughs> question? Um, oh, uh, the alcoholic oh, mom. Oh, so, I would say you need to get her some help. She needs to go see a therapist. She I would say intervention. A psychiatrist. Yeah. Boom, through the door intervention. <clears throat> Just be like, look. Well, you know. I don't know. Could it, maybe like her alcoholism was brought on by like a, a postpartum depression after having the baby, and oh, that's maybe. why it's been escalating since then. Maybe, or maybe it had already been starting. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm not sure. But um, well, you can be sure. It's that's okay. I'm we're, very we're sure. I know here. this person's life. <laughs> I know them personally. This happened to me. It was my wife. Okay, so Mayum, <laughs> Mayum, Mayum. Balik defends choice to breastfeed her son until he was four years old. Gross. Um, continue reading. This is from Huffington Post. All right, hold on, real quick. We're gonna take a quick break, real quick, uh, and we will be back uh, to the uh, finishing this question and moving on. Anyways, yeah, um, we're back and definitely need to uh, do an intervention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Done. Anything else? I just think that's the only way. Yeah, you can really... get your kid away from her. Not well, like. What, like lock the kid up? No, 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 no. If you got your mom or a sister or a brother. Oh, so just like take the kid out of the house and like the you, first you gotta way. you gotta let her know that this is not okay. Mm-hmm. You being hammered around our one year old child, mm-hmm. that's not gonna fly. And is she is she a stay at home mom? I mean, I would assume so, probably. Okay. He, he didn't specify, but if he if she's 
Well, well, well it said no, he came, came home, home to work. her. Yeah, he he gets home at eight thirty, and she's already pounded six or seven beers. Yeah, no, that's not that's not okay. Especially when you're out of the house and you can't watch your mm-hmm. watch your child. No, so you got to set the ground. You know, put your foot down and say that's not okay. Um, I'm willing to help you. I love you. I'm willing to help whatever you're doing, but you've got to take a step back and realize that you're getting hammered around our one year old. Okay. It's not okay. So for the time being, she's going to go stay with my mom, whoever. Sure. And then let's go get some help. Yeah. That's reasonable. Because you got to worry about the child. Of course. Of course. Anything else you want to add on that? No, I think that was good. All right. Um, how to start my life over. Right. So I'm 26 and I started over several times in my life. Moving from secondary school to sixth uh, is where I was from where I was badly bullied, then to a different town, then to a different university. Then the transition after university ended working life and my friends moving home and then moving home. Um, up until now, it sucked each time, but I've tried really hard and now I have a small but amazing group of friends and a lovely boyfriend. But I'm going to be forced to start over if we break up, which seems likely, and I'll lose my friends because I'll be the one phased out. I'll have to move back in with my parents, and finding more friends will be difficult because this time I won't move locations. Uh, no, wait. Because this time I won't move location. Work is trying. Work is tying me down to the foreseeable future. So I guess the question is, how can I start over in the same place? I I find that really interesting because that, that's actually the situation I find myself in mm-hmm. currently. Like the past couple of years, I've been doing a lot of moving around and and jumping around and. Um, <clears throat> had a boyfriend and we recently broke up mm-hmm. and uh so now we had an apartment together and now i'm the only one living there so thankfully i didn't have to move back in with my parents so that mm-hmm. wasn't an issue but now i'm having to experience like starting over without moving somewhere mm-hmm. and it's odd so i can i can relate so what, um, have you, what have you tried to do to alleviate the stress weird awkward phase i'm just trying to continue to like hang out with my friends more make mm-hmm. more plans i'm trying to just get to know myself better and just try to start over fresh with myself i guess just try to be okay, okay. so yeah. uh, and would you say this has been more of an introspective start over versus just like hey start over new friends whatever blah 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 it's been definitely let's p- pinpoint my myself and what makes me tick yeah i would definitely say so it's okay. been it's been very reflective for me okay like anything i i probably don't have much to offer for this one because i've the past you know, some odd years I've focused really hard on my friends and my family and keeping those relationships tight and close. So I I wouldn't know where to begin with that. You've just done the same exact thing your entire life. No, for... I've started a new job. I've graduated. Sure. And but you haven't had to, like, stuff. cut ties and start over with friends no. or whatever. No. Yeah. You're just same old, same old, boring Joe. I, I'm not complicated. You are not. That's the, I, And that's not a bad thing. Uh, having a non-complicated life is a... Is okay. All right. <clears throat> my ex texted me today. Mm. Out of nowhere, my ex sent me a message saying that today reminds her of the day when we started dating. I haven't had any contact besides birthday texts, and as short, and they were as short as they could be. In the meantime, she found a new BF. Why? Because people have to move on. Well, no, she's. Te- well, well, I think she. I think he's asking why the. X text. Well, this is oh, good. So whenever sorry. we have situations like this, we never really have a girl's perspective. So this will be, this will be interesting. So, have you ever texted an ex-boyfriend while you have a boyfriend just to say hi, what's up? Yes. Well, no, no, no. Well, oh, I mean, okay, I'm, not saying, you say that, I, I'm not saying you haven't. I'm saying to say that a day yeah. reminded you of today, today, um, out of nowhere. That seems saying, really, today reminds her of the day when we started dating. That seems really intimate. To I me. wouldn't send something like that to an ex boyfriend while okay. I have a boyfriend. Definitely not. Okay. Maybe if like I saw something funny and like right. if I knew my ex and I were on good terms, but I would never say anything like that. That seems very like intimate and like you're trying to like rekindle hey there right. yeah and that's you know the moon is bright tonight Ooh. dot 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 <laughs> no, no, no 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 i i have a very strict if you're in a relationship block all exes because mm-hmm. that's that's just how i operate i agree I nothing want, good can come from it no i don't want any i don't want my girlfriend to have any notion of doubt in in her mind um because i also struggle with that um so no i would i would never put myself in the situation to 
to have that happen. But this guy apparently, uh, I would he's receiving the yeah. I would I'd go with my route and not like don't, oh you don't. just so she's got her life, you've got yours. That's it. Yep. But don't. like, what if what if it was like they dated for like twelve million years and then that's wow. a lot of years. That is a lot of years. Yeah. What's up? Oh no, you're good. Okay. The the mic is good. It's fine. Okay. So um, no. Still not. Unless you still. I don't know. I just no, if, because if you also for well, her. you also have to respect the man that she's with. Mm-hmm. So you have to respect that that guy is worrying about the same stuff that you were worrying about when you guys were dating. You have to respect the man as as that's that's his that's his girlfriend now. That's that's a girl that he probably loves. Um, oh, all right, were... Blake. Fine, you're right. Good guy, you're Blake. Over good here. Good guy, Blake. All right. I just I don't know. I my my perspective is that you know obviously it's a selfish thing, but again uh, we've had this conversation before. What we put and what we value and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so um, I think definitely if this ex girlfriend was now if it's been like years and years and you're just like trying to do it just to right. I, like I want to date this girl back or whatever. But like if it's like. If it's you, you shared so many experiences together, and you've had all these good times, and you really had a connection there, and then you weren't the one that broke it off. Well, you still have feelings. You're obviously the one being dumped. Always has feelings, and so I think right, and I think that's where the respect part comes in. Mm, I guess. Like, I guess. No, I mean, I, I, I. Well, then, okay. Well, so what if he has? What if he has a, a open conversation with her instead of trying to be sly behind the back? Just say, look, I want to. Uh, can we meet to, for coffee? I have some stuff I need to talk to you about because obviously. If she's texting these low key maybe thing, maybe there's something there left, then have this open conversation and then say, Look, you know, if you want to get back together with me, break up with your boyfriend and there's no there's no there's no overlapping. Is that is that okay? Is that because I mean Well, so put yourself in that boyfriend's shoes. Would you want I obviously I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want that at all. But if this girl was like, Hey, look, you know, I, I this talk talking to my ex uh, rekindled some stuff. I can't do anything about it. I, there's no, you can't. So, so, th- so, that's what I'm saying. But I would rather, I would hundred million percent much rather say, look, I'm breaking things off with you to date someone else versus me discovering that she has been low key dating somebody. Well, for sure, yeah, right. I so, agree with that. so I do agree with the let's let's keep the distance and keep it separated and blah blah blah. But depending on when this relationship ended and how it ended and on what terms it ended, I think, you know, it's not, it's not horrible for him to try and win her back. And for all we know, she's been dating this guy for like three days. True. That's Could true. Could be like super, like very new. And that's why he's like, now she started dating somebody like what? Mm-hmm. And I, I would also say that like, I don't know, you can't put it in a box. If you have feelings for somebody, then you should be able to tell them. I mean, yeah, there is having respect for somebody and it's about how you go about doing it, but you can't just blanket say you can never tell anybody you have feelings for them if they're with somebody, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because even though, yeah, it is, it could possibly be detrimental to their relationship, it could be for the best because she may be happier with the other person or whoever, whatever. It's best for them in the long run because they shouldn't be together anyways. Fair enough. Having said that, though, I think it's also important to recognize that if you're the guy then this girl is texting, to me, that that crosses a line. So, And I guess that's where we're different. I, Even if I broke up with a girl and I'm not dating anybody else, mm-hmm. I don't want that. Life is already complicated with feelings and emotions and thought sure. processes and whatnot. I wouldn't... Just me personally, I wouldn't want. I have other things to worry about than a girl that could possibly cheat on her boyfriend. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree. No, I definitely see that, and I'm not saying that what she's doing is excusable. I'm just saying, as a blanket statement, like I think that people right, telling if you have feelings, each other you how they to, feel is okay. Right. But also, I think we're focusing a little bit too much on this guy. Like this chick, what's up with this chick? She's shady. She's yes, she shady. is. She, she said that she sent it. So <clears throat> yeah, yes, so she did. Either she has only been dating this guy for a second, and she still has feelings for her ex, and she's realizing that that was stupid or something, mm-hmm. or she's just a hoe who's not getting yeah, enough attention true. that day. <laughs> that from is her actually boyfriend very or they're true. Fighting. That is another yeah. thing. Yeah. Because um, and she just wants the attention of a guy to make her feel good. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, there are some people that I've listened to who are women and they say that women do that mm-hmm. as being a man. I don't know if this is true or not, no, but it's I definitely will, true. So <laughs> I can't Damn say it. that Damn all it. women are, <laughs> um, I, I need wouldn't to go. Say that necessarily. <laughs> I think that, you know, 
not all women do it to that extent necessarily. Sure, but there are some... So like reaching out to like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like I wouldn't say I do that. It's not like whenever I have a boyfriend, I'm like, I miss dating you. Like, so ex-boyfriends, I don't do that. But I mean, like, um, I definitely know, uh, like a lot of girls, uh, women, I don't know. I'm 21. I guess I'm a female woman now, but I'm a thing. Not objects. Women are not objects. I guess biological sex, (laughs) typically, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. No, that's fine. She's that, a mess I agree. Yeah, it, it could be could be both sides. Yeah, it's, it comes back to that: is the guy an asshole or is the guy actually a nice nerd? So we never. Yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. You never know. <laughs> All right. The internet. Next Very one. True. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> I'll try and cut to the chase. I've been with my girlfriend for seven months, and it's been the best ever. Uh, it's been the best it's ever been. We spent every day and night together, and neither of us have had been happier. It's amazing. Now, my sister is going through a rough time. She's depressed, and with only uh, not having her license at 21 years old, I'm really her only way of getting her out and doing stuff. I was with my girlfriend, and my mom came into my room and basically said my sister is in a really bad place and would help if she could do things with you two. Now, my girlfriend is telling me she's not coming over as much because she feels bad that her sister needs attention, too. I just don't know what to do. My happiness is being thrown out against my will because my sister's happiness is not my responsibility. Call me selfish if you want, but she's 21, doesn't have a job or a license or any responsibilities, and wonder why she's so bored with life. I don't know what to do. Ooh. <laughs> so do you, you th- toss your family to the side and deal with the potential future lady or s- make a sacrifice of your relationship and put delve into the family and try and get that fixed? At the cost of maybe sacrificing a healthy relationship. So I see at the root of this, we have a 21-year-old with no job, no responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Red flag. Okay. I would discuss that situation with my sister first. And I have how, a, how would you discuss that situation? Well, I have a great relationship with my sister, and when whenever either one of us are out of line, we don't we don't do the passive aggressive stuff. It's you're acting like a bitch or you're acting like an asshole. Stop. You know, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Like, if you need to talk about it, let's, let's talk about it. Stop doing blah, blah, blah. Why are you not focusing on school? Why are you not showing up to your job? Blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. And so I would hope that my sister would say to me, Blake, you need to get your shit together. You need to like, yeah, I'll be there for you. You can hang out with us. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you need to get yourself a job. Mm-hmm. You need to get yourself stable enough to well, to the point where you're not – get yourself some friends. Sure. Get yourself a license. You know, well, so, but it, Be on but the it, grid. It sounds it sounds like that their relationship isn't the same relationship that, the relationship that you have with your sister. It might be more of since – you know, since uh, the, the sister might be uh, young – I don't because I don't think it said how old the guy was. So, I mean, I guess if he's still living at home, I, I guess they're probably in the same age. Um, so – is there an indirect way that you can deal with this instead of because I mean I agree, uh, like I've said before, being direct, you know, try get to the cut to the chase, say hey look X Y and Z, great, but um, you know the sister might be more a little more sensitive and might realize that she's kind of in this mess and just bringing it up and trying to you know give it to her straight will just make it worse. I talked to know. my girlfriend then, okay. so I would I would let her know hey this is what's going down with my sister. Mm-hmm. I understand if you don't want to hang out with her as much as you want to. Like mm-hmm. I get it; she's not your friend. She's not also not your responsibility either. True. So that's not fair to you to put you in situations like that when you didn't ask for it, you didn't deserve it. So I don't know if I if that was the way it was with my little brother, and the only time every time Brittany came over to the house and Trent just wanted to hang around. And but Trent's also fifteen. That's that's a weird situation. I've never been encountered that before. Mm. Well, and, and and I mean, I I kind of get that situation. Um, not on like a family, uh, not on a family level necessarily, but definitely when I was younger, I was definitely the the butthole kid who was loud and annoying. He didn't want to do things he didn't want to do. No. So uh, yeah, right. It's shocking, <laughs> surprising. Um. So if there was someone that I was supposed to hang out with, or you know. You know, we I de- we had you know growing up we had family friends. So, um, you know, if my mom's like, "Oh, you need to hang out with this insert family friend here," and I'm like, "But I don't want to," well, I kind of get that sentiment um, of 
how how can he sacrifice time in his life to put forth something that he may not want to do because he recognizes that this person um, isn't going at 100%. Because if he's going at 100%, he's got a job, he's working, blah, blah, and he's making money, and he drives, and whatever, and he's, you know, all the right things in the right path, and then you see someone else who's not putting in that much effort. I get the, well, why should I help you if you're not putting in effort? But again, you know, she might have uh, some legimate issues, and that might not be why she's not doing 100%. So, I don't know, Diane, if you, you have a hot yeah, take? Go ahead, oh, Diane, sorry. Sorry to interrupt, Blake. But you've been talking too much. Gosh, I have. I have. I know. So, do you have a hot take on this, Diane? Uh, I was just saying, uh, gonna say that like, there comes a certain point where you have to put your own happiness above like somebody who might be like taking too much. Whenever it com- becomes too much of like a uh, number one priority, amen. Yeah, yeah. So like, there is helping others and like, especially family and close friends, and I firmly believe in doing that but you know whenever it starts to take away from your life Mm -hmm. and it starts to seriously hinder your relationships and ability to like be with people and have a good healthy life and be happy then it's time to distance yourself in my opinion but i mean you can't distance yourself from a family (laughs) especially whenever you live with them and but you can well true but i mean if you have your mom ragging on you and you have outside yeah. influences that are kind of cornering cornering you into this yeah then um i mean i i, I get that no though. no no but that's true but uh yeah maybe so, just trying to find a way to not have to be their chauffeur and caretaker and true. entertainment and maybe while having set her up your with own friends, life as well yeah set her up with friends that will drive her around or something like that so or just tell her it's her own problem or i don't know i have true. a very like harsh look on this like no i mean <laughs> I, and i get it i mean yeah. i think i think all of us are definitely let's take the direct route and talk and not mm-hmm. uh not you know beat around the bush but again not everyone's like that so yeah but uh, Blake, i guess i can't wrap my mind around that and then that's okay. Very you're you're just a horrible person because you Whoa. can't. Just <laughs> Sorry, I I, I meant to. I meant to Blake is a horrible. Me, right? yeah, yeah, there you go. A, Blake is a horrible person. Misdirected <laughs> uh, in, insert uh, insult here. Um, but Blake, before we interrupt you, what were we gonna say? Do you remember? Nope. Okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, uh. All right. Fine. Well, we'll do this. Is a sh- relative short one. Okay. Uh, help. Slow reading since brain trauma. Uh, mm. Early last year, I had a brain injury. Since then, I have recovered in a number of areas. One being, I learned how to read. But since learning, uh, since relearning, I read extremely slow. Uh, previously, I averaged about eighty books a month. Uh, now I aver- I average eighty books a month. <laughs> now I what? average fifteen. Is okay. he reading Clifford I the don't Big see Red the Dog? Problem. <laughs> Golly. That's okay. All right, Are we never talking mind. like big books? I like, would that, not be here right now if I read That's very impressive. I don't know. You can't, you can't expect perfect cognitive function after a crazy brain injury that makes you have to relearn reading. I thought it was going to be like my friends are making fun of me, but he's just like, like I can't read as many books. I mean, yes, I understand that this is very sucks. difficult. Yeah, yes. reading a but lot you're still before. reading 15 books a month. That's so. still good, yeah. <sighs> never mind. Okay. Still more than two a week. All right, we're going to go. Okay, so we'll do one last question. Um, God, and then... Please. We'll do a. Do you want to do a controversial post or a hot post? Yes. All right. Controversial post it is. Uh, of let's do controversial post of today. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. This will be strap in everybody. Uh oh. Strap in. Uh oh. Two of my closest <laughs> friends said some horrible things about gays slash non-binary people, and I don't know what to do. My boyfriend and I are good friends with another couple. They came over. They come over for drinks every weekend, and we uh, always have a nice time. Last weekend, we started having uh, we started having a seemingly innocent discussion about how that there's so many new gender definition terms and preferences. When all of a sudden, my friend said something along the lines of, "In quotes, where does it stop? It's pretty soon, pedophilia and necrophilia will become normal." And this was in quotes, everybody. Whoa. My boyfriend and I stopped dead on our tracks and asked him if he was actually comparing people's sexual identity to being a pedo or a, a necrophile. Is that how you say it? Necrophile? Necrophilia? Necrophilia. Well, but the, the short... If necrophile. People who, necrophile. People who practice necrophilia are necrophiles. Was that I believe so. Having sex with dead people? Dead yes. people, yeah. All right. Well, huh. I mean, it says necrophile, so I don't know if I was pronouncing okay. it right. Gross. Okay. Um, his girlfriend then jumped to his defense and kept saying that they had nothing against gay people, and again in quotes, but uh, that he had pointed, uh, he had a point nonetheless. Um, I was not buying it. My boyfriend and I were both gobsmacked and 
that I kept trying to calmly explain how offensive they were being, but they ended up asking us to drop it shortly uh, and left shortly after. A few months ago, I had suggested we all go to a drag show, and his girlfriend brought up not being into that scene again in quotes, uh, which kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But Is I passed offensive? off as no big deal. Okay, well, I passed no, off no, 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 no we'll, big deal. We'll talk about it. I'm not starting to see the bigger picture. Oh no, I now starting to see the bigger picture and lost a tedious amount, tremendous amount of respect for them. Last paragraph. We're almost there. I'm now <laughs> I'm now at a point where I don't know if I want to be around them or if I should respect them to the point of view and avoid confrontations like this in the future. For the record, I am a straight agnostic female, but I've always been intolerant of that sort of bigotry. Uh, it especially boggles my mind because. Well, this is no representation of anybody, but it boggles my mind that they're both Jewish. So I would expect <laughs> them to be more aware of the damages of prejudice. Hey, your advice would be much appreciated. Fucking Jews. Gosh. Well, okay, Blake, take it away. I'm depressed. These Jews are hateful bigots. Yep. Um. Let's see. So, first uh, off, I want to say that just because someone doesn't <laughs> just because someone has a differing view or opinion does not mean that they are bad people except in some cases you know if except they're for, you know racists sure no, um i get the i get the idea so i can i can see how that if you're a little bit more traditional like for example i i like to think that i have a group of friends that have a wide variety of uh, political, religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. That's why I hang out with you sure, <laughs> sometimes. I'm just a wild card. Right. I'm your so, token Jew friend. <laughs> never have I... Okay, I take that back. So, you... You don't judge people for how they think. You don't... You know, they're... they're you're not in their shoes. Mm -hmm. But if you want to avoid those conversations, you, you, you can... Like True. there are plenty of things that I don't talk about with other people because one, I, It'll I disagree with them on stuff, but right. I, I prefer to sit down like we do a lot of times and mm -hmm. talk it out for a couple hours or so. And mm -hmm. we're, we're better for it. Right. I well, don't think you should be, don't think they're bigot, bigoted ideas. And I'm, and well, I'm just going to go. They ahead don't and, think that they're, that that's being bigoted though. And so you have to put that into consideration like what? However, she doesn't think that they're wrong either. Fair enough. We're <laughs> talking about a group of people that have religiously tried to eliminate well, a whole race of people hold versus on, hold on. Let's, people let's that think that steer clear of the KKK for a second. So, don't you think? Because I think with the vast amount of information that we have readily available to us, I don't necessarily think the they don't think they're bigoted is an excuse. I, I, I just don't. I mean, I agree that you can be raised in a society or you can be raised in a household, which then, of course, your sp sphere of influence will be around the people who agree with you. Um, you can have it skewed. You can definitely have that skewed. But I think currently with the 21st century, with media 24-7 and the internet at your fingertips and smartphones and being able to do look up literally anything, I think you can understand that when you see a group of people who are being, you know, uh, uh, yelled at and screamed at and, and essentially persecuted online and you share the same viewpoint, I think you can say, well, hey, something's wrong. And so I, at that point, especially because it, it sounds like these guys are like probably in their late 20s, maybe early 30s because they're like a couple and they're doing couple things right. that old couple people do. Mm -hmm. But um, and so so when you see when you see the online uh, when you see the online hate towards the you, you know, can't be closed minded. And I understand that you have some extreme on both ends. But um, when you see you know, for okay, let, let let's just simplify it. Okay, Blake, you were raised to believe that red is a stupid color. Okay? okay, and I say red is a good color. Okay, so you go ten years from now with the information and technology available, you see that you know seventy percent of people say red is an okay color. You see that, and you recognize, and you acknowledge that fact that seventy percent of the people, you know, whether or not it's true, but you recognize the fact that seventy percent of the people think sure. that red is a good color. Sure, but you still choose to say, well. I'm I'm still going to be in that minority and not even consider that okay. maybe I'm thinking incorrectly. And how do we know that these people haven't thought that? So we're just assuming that these that right. these people that are assuming or that are making those claims. My my point is, I guess. Uh, sorry, I lost my train no, of thought. I'm my sorry. point I, is, I've ranted for a if um, these people 
are under the I'm I'm going to assume that they've thought about their opinions mm-hmm. and that they've worked it out and that's and the idea of multiple genders and not being for gay marriage sure, or whatever all of that stuff they've thought about it they've thought of, they've really thought about it in their heads and worked it out to where that's what that's what they believe mm-hmm. so under that assumption the only thing that I can rationalize is Yes, these people think a certain way, but I'm going to assume that they've thought about their beliefs as much as I've tried to work through mine. Mm-hmm. Though we came to a different conclusion, that doesn't mean I still can't have fun with them. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean I still can't love them. Mm-hmm. I, half of my family are a bunch of white trash Wait, well, Trump but, supporters, but I still love them. But do, don't you think that ha- – and especially because – And that's under the assumption that what they're saying is actually bigotry. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one thing that we have to – clarify and that's where the that's where the gray area comes in so people think one thing like remember we had this conversation with john some people think one thing is hate speech versus other people think that hate speech doesn't even exist right and that all words are free and do whatever right. you want so well but but i think those are i think those are two different instances so i, I do agree the, the 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 your train of logic i do agree with blake that um you can have uh two rational people have different opinions you know thinking about it very clearly but in this instance, don't you think that if they if they if they're like, eh, you know, and I mean, I guess even in this situation, they didn't even say that they didn't like, you know, gay people and those of the non-binary or whatever the traditional traditional cis white people. Um, but don't you think that would affect their personality, though? Because the, the, the idea of uh, hate speech being a thing versus not being a thing, I think you can internalize that and still be a quote unquote regular person in a, and have a good time because that won't come up. But the idea of perception of other people versus an idea. So if you perceive that, oh, I don't really think that gay people should do X, Y, and Z, or I don't think that X, Y, and Z about people are a thing. You don't think that will uh, affect the um, how you treat other people, essentially, versus, oh, I, I don't think hate speech is an idea. Because it's an idea. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a non-tangible idea where people, that's, that's the difference. So the goalpost is moved for different people, though. That's what I'm saying. So... Uh... Let's say, just for example, I didn't believe in gay marriage. Mm -hmm. You did. Mm -hmm. Would you think of me as a bad person because I didn't believe in gay marriage? Well, would you hang out with me less if I believe that gay marriage shouldn't be allowed? Well, and it's hard for it's hard for me to answer this question because I've lived my whole life knowing Blake is just a lover of all people, and and Mm -hmm. that that's just what it is. So, but if there was Blake, the I don't like gay marriage. I I think I I truly think that if that was what you believed, you would treat people differently. You would you would have a different perception of uh, social situations and and how you how you held yourself amongst conversation. I think that uh, well, I'm sorry, I, Diane is. I know we're ranting here. No but, no no, you're no, fine. I just no, you're wasn't good. Trying to interrupt. That's oh no, it's I totally fine. Very gently. No, you're good. Um, <laughs> so good. so I I don't think now if it's Blake hates cats or whatever you know then that's fine you know we probably wouldn't you know hang out at the house but we still would hang out just as often um just because you know i don't i don't think well I, I, that's but, not that's not an important enough factor of my of personality of my yeah, personality of your, yeah. to cause right. so harm. When you, i just and and and, and to, to beat around the bush even though i say i get direct to the point um i think if you have different different opinions about uh, a group of people uh, uh, the religion of people, of anything of people, that will definitely affect how you uh, act around them in the long run. And and I just I think that's that's what, whether you that. whether you uh, uh, purposefully do it or you do it unintentionally, that's just a, a byproduct of having not a open conceptual mind about life and people. Okay, we'll put a pin in that. Go All right, ahead, so go ahead, Diane. Okay, so to touch on what you said, you both, um, you're talking about how you think that that would ha- influence how they treated people. I would just say to touch on like that the post. They said that they were totally pleasant and they really got along well and they were, like, really great. So I would say that, you know, they're probably decent people who I think have a crappy opinion, in my sure. opinion. Uh, and obviously in, in the poster's uh, view also. And so I would just say, like, as far as advice goes, like, you're perfectly entitled just as much as they're entitled to have their opinion about mm. gay marriage. You're allowed to not want to hang out with them because of it. It doesn't make you a bad person if you're, like, if if their opinion of that is is strong enough and it bothers you enough, then mm. don't hang out with them. You're entitled to do that. You don't have to be friends with anybody you don't want to be. Right. And I I understand that. Like that's how I feel about like uh, 
whenever I have conversations with people about like being a vegetarian and like all that kind of stuff. There's, I can have differing opinions with people. Most people don't agree with mm. me, so I'm used to that. But sometimes there's people that are so stubborn and so annoying and so hard-headed and really drive their point in and mm. to where it gets obnoxious to me, and I don't want to be friends with them anymore. Mm. So I can understand both points. Okay. Well, I well, and and thank you, Diane, for actually answering the question <laughs> because I think oh, yeah, we were sorry. about to like totally go out into space here and talk <laughs> larger picture here, but. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think, I, I think that is to, to piggy, to piggyback off of what Diane was saying. I think that's kind of a sign of a bigger problem that they might not have discovered yet because yes, they're pleasant with each other because mm-hmm. they're both white straight. I'm assuming they're white. I don't know. I don't think, I don't remember if they said they're uh, race or not, but they're uh, both straight couples and uh, well off, I'm sure. And they, they can have dinner parties and whatever and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure they're fine. So, uh, but in a situation where if maybe it's a group social uh, area and the couple invites a gay couple, and then what will the uh, the the gay haters say? Well, they're not gay haters, but whatever. Um, maybe. Uh, but that, that's my point. So being pleasant in a situation where you can be pleasant, but can you do that in every single situation? Because I feel like again, back to and Blake, I'll let you respond if you want to. Um, I think back to my point of your differing opinions about people. Well, people are everywhere. You'll always experience a situation where, uh, you know, you may or may not see someone who might be flamboyant and then they're going to make a snide comment about it or whatever it is. So I think, I think that's a lot harder and then more telling of your personality. Blake, do you have anything? Yeah. And this may be a personal anecdote, but I remember when we went down to Austin, my dad and my mom and brother and sister, and my parents are traditional, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and, they don't necessarily look at their view on gay marriage from a religious standpoint as much as it is a biological standpoint. That's just their view. But besides sure. the point, one of my mom's best friend, his name is Eddie, um, gay dude in his 40s or 50s now, mm-hmm. been gay his whole life. That's just that's who sure. he is. More power to him. And we went to dinner with him, and we've, we will continue to go to dinner with him. He's probably going to go to my wedding. He's going to be there for every other you know sure. event, family. Sure. So – my point is just because somebody pers- uh, believes certain things, I don't think that necessarily dictates their actions. Like think about every time you see a hot girl on the street, mm. if your, if your mind, you know, if your opinions dictated every action you did, mm-hmm. most guys would be in jail. <laughs> you True. know what I'm saying? No. So I, I think you can have personal beliefs and opinions, but that don't, dictate how you act in every single in everyday life so okay. like if it, it, it's it, the same, no, thing, I, I same agree. thing with us we disagree on a lot of things sure and it doesn't mean but but, <laughs> but, but, but actions... even then but even then it's our disagreements are all ideology it's all how we view gun control how we view the government should make laws the size of government blah blah whatever it is, political or not um you know it's not like hey that guy walking down the street is a insert blank here. And then we'll have different opinions on that because I think both of us, and that's, and that's probably why, you know, I, I feel like we're really good friends is because we have just a general love of everything. It's, it's how you, how you divide and uh, section off um, the, the I- ideology again, but for the most part, it's a big love fest. So, right. Okay. Uh, and, and, and that's, and that's, and that's why, and, you know, and, and that's just, and that's my opinion. Whereas, uh, you know, someone who might be less tolerant towards that personally for me, I wouldn't want to associate myself because, and I don't know if that's just me making assumptions or making things that are not there. Um, I just, I feel like you might have a more negative idea towards, uh, the social situation, I guess. All right. One more personal anecdote. Sure. One of my cousins, second cousins, her name is faith. Mm -hmm. Um, she just had a, she just had a baby. Mm -hmm. Um, and last, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. she and her black husband came to our Thanksgiving, and I'm sure you. I've told you plenty of stories about the the white, white trash, trash side family, of my family yeah. and whatnot. But I was really proud of the way my family dealt with it. Really, I was very impressed, very proud that despite what they may believe, they were still mm-hmm. cordial. They shook his hand. They talked mm-hmm. about family stuff. They talked about sports. They sure. talked about everything. That they had in common, except for that one thing. Now, do you think that's because family's family, and you gotta love family no matter who no, they date? No, because or... that's no, because I think that their 
they're outside of that zone. They're, okay. they're a bunch of people that grew up in Coleman and Grand, rural Grand Prairie and Grosbeck that sure. th- the only time that they've seen a black person is when they watch NFL or sports sporting events. Right. You know? So I also work with a bunch of car guys that aren't necessarily culturally progressive mm-hmm. in their ideals, mm-hmm. but we work with a huge array of people and not once have I seen them make any actions that would dictate that they're not nice, kind people. And okay. I guess that's my point. People can have, again, people can have certain political beliefs or religious beliefs, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I believe it's how you act around those people. And if you're a genuinely nice person to those people, that's what I care about. I don't care about what you think. I care about how you act. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's that's my point. No, I, I agree. I definitely agree with that. But then it's also like, you can be nice to somebody at work, but do you want to go hang out after work with somebody who you know hates Mexicans, for example? Mm. And, Probably and, not. And, and and just to bounce off that, um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to shit on your anecdotes. No, good. I, I think yeah. I think it's uh, you know interesting, and mm-hmm. especially because you have and the insight. It's really, yeah, and I think um, it was a really great thing. But I but in both of those situations, <laughs> I think it was. Um, and again, I could be totally wrong, but it's, you're at a, you're in a professional environment, you're at a work, you're at a job, you know, you, people are paying you money. So, you know, in that instance, people are just saying green and they're going to say, okay, you, you gave me money to purchase this thing or, or to fix no, this No, because the people that I'm talking about are in completely different departments that we, for no reason at all, would, we could say, fuck them and not mm-hmm. talk to them for one second. Mm-hmm. But some of the guys that I work with, whenever we'll sit down and have lunch with, I know <laughs> because this one guy grew up in the heartland of Georgia mm-hmm. and I've, I've heard things slip before. Right. I know how this guy thinks, but when we sit down and have lunch with the insert, whatever, insert whoever, yeah. we're laughing, cutting it up and talking about every single thing that we have in common, except for that one thing. And it's because he acts mm-hmm. like a genuine, funny, nice country right. boy not as the person that we we want him the the mean spirited person that we desperately want him to be mm-hmm. he's no that he knows how to be a nice person and that's and that's ultimately what's important sure is no, I, how you yeah, act I how you treat others not necessarily how you think mm-hmm. but it's again it's your actions that i think are louder well, then, than words well then what i will say uh to bounce off that and just kind of wrap it up unless anyone has any last closing thoughts um that's the difference in um it's i i think that's a very challenging difference that people experience where you can have you can have the kind of hate and the prejudice towards people but how are you going to let that show? Because I think there are people that do let it show, and they they do show that the you know their ignorance is showing right, or whatever. Those aren't good people, right? And and so you know people that you associate yourself with and you work with, I'm sure those are the people who can keep their composure. Mm-hmm. But I still think that's an itching thing that's in the back of their head. Whereas if you know this guy from Georgia, let's say he he hates guns and he should ban every single gun, mm-hmm. you know that's something that will could never be talked about and you know, whatever. And they totally ignore that. Whereas, like I said before, you're always interacting with people. And if you have the ability to keep that in the back burner and keep that itch in the back burner, great. That's awesome. That's something that everyone should experience and, or or everyone should have and uh, really pursue. But then there are people that let it show. They're still, they hold it back. They definitely, you, you, you keep, you put them behind closed doors and they'll let loose, but in public, they might let it show. And I think, even if you see a little bit of it, even if you see just a little tiny peak of that ignorance, I think then relating it back to the question, you probably shouldn't associate yourself with them because then, well, what about behind closed doors? How are mm-hmm. they going to act? So unless you want to find out how they act behind closed doors. Which I think I would. Like, cause I'm, I'm curious about that. That, that stuff makes me curious mm-hmm. is cause I, I like to talk about that stuff. You know, I'm not shy about any sure. of that stuff if you want to have, but I won't bring it up kind of thing you know if you want to talk about it sure let's let's talk about it for an hour a couple hours or so and then go back to drinking beer or playing video games kind sure. of thing um but i i would want to i don't think disassociating yourself with those people like and again there's a difference between somebody that's uh that's conservative like my parents mm-hmm. who don't have a mean spirited bone in their body Versus someone who's running over people in Charleston with a, with their Dodge. True. Like a, there's there's a huge discrepancy there, and it's mm-hmm. actions versus beliefs. 
Okay. And so that's that's again yeah. that's what it strict for me it strictly boils down to your actions speak louder than words okay. or your beliefs. No, I I, I and I I can agree with that sentiment. So, uh, Diane, do you have any closing remarks or anything? No. Okay. Cool. We must end it up. Well, um, yeah, that is. I think that's a relatively okay night, note to end on. So, sure. um, thank you guys for being on uh, this you. advice segment. Um, and thank you for anyone who uh, stuck it out to the end. Really appreciate it. Um, and if you have, again, questions or concerns or whatever is going on in your life, you've got my emails in the somewhere. I think it's in the link in the down below in the description. And there's in the thing. And there's a way there's a way to find my email. Uh, Facebook, uh, tweet me, um, you know, whatever it is. I'm on most of the social medias. Um, and then we can answer those questions. And then. Once you get your question, then you can tune out and never listen to the rest of the podcast. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, thank you, everyone, and have a great uh, day, night, afternoon, or whenever you're listening to it. Peace out. And that is the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Just letting you know again that this was sponsored by Haven Cottage Event Center, okay? This thing's coming out end of spring in 20. 20- 18 that's this year okay small medium whatever kind of event that you want bring it here they can style it they can change it they can get it right just for you all right celebrate whatever you want have any kind of business meeting whatever it is just literally your heart's desire remember haven cottage event center everything you need to know is in the description down below how to get in contact with them okay all right cool peace out